Okay, let's factor this trinomial here. So we have 12x squared plus 5x minus 3. And obviously that's going to be the topic for this video. We're going to factor this, but we're going to factor this using two methods. So I'm going to show you two methods you can use to factor trinomials. Now, um, just a little heads up. I'm going to just be doing a quick overview of these methods in terms of just uh, showing uh, you these methods with respect to this one problem. Uh, so if you're struggling with factoring trinomials, you're going to need more practice beyond this video. And I'm going to give you some additional guidance here on how to get better at factoring. So don't go away and we will get into factoring this guy here in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you want to check out my math help program, you can follow the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses. Um, of all the main courses like pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, going to be launching pre-calculus here shortly. Uh, but I have a lot of uh, specialty courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're preparing for an exam like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, um, oh boy, what other ones, CLEP, Alex, AccuPlacer, teacher certification, nursing entrance. There's a ton of reasons that people are trying to learn math outside of a math course. So if you're preparing for any one of these exams, uh, just go to my site and check out my full course catalog. If I don't have your test, drop me a line and I'll help you out the best I can. I also work a lot with independent uh, learners like homeschoolers. I have a great homeschool learning system. So if you are homeschooling, I can definitely help you out. And then I just help those of you as well that are struggling in your math class. So if you're taking algebra and you're frustrated with factoring, then you definitely want to check out like my algebra course. I can really definitely help you out. But one thing you have to be doing to help yourself out when it comes to learning mathematics, that is note taking. OK, so over decades of teaching mathematics, one thing has been just crystal clear to me. Those students who really put the effort in and take great math notes almost always have great math grades. And the reverse is true. Those students who are uh, can't wait to get to math class. You know why they can't wait to get to math class? Because their best friends are in that same class. And then they like to, you know, get caught up in what's going on. And then when they, you know, get done talking, they everyone breaks out their cell phone. And then after they get done with their social media, they go ahead and do their homework for their next class in math class. Listen, I made all those mistakes uh, myself. And as a teacher, you see everything that goes on in the classroom. So I get it. But I can tell you right now, you know, don't complain when you get a grade that is like a C minus. OK, you know, whose fault is that? So when it comes to your ability to learn math, well, you don't, you can't really judge that. I can tell you right now, almost everybody can do very, very well math, but you've got to take great math notes, and that requires effort, consistency, and discipline. But if you focus on your note taking, things will just go excellent for you. Okay, just trust me on that one. Okay, but in the meantime, as you're improving in your note taking, I actually offered uh, detailed, comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra. Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and Trigonometry. You can find links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so let's check out this problem. Now, if you think you know how to do it, I would certainly encourage you to pause the video and uh, see if you can factor this uh, trinomial. Always use these if you're a subscriber, one, thank you. Uh, but two, anytime I do a problem, uh, the best way to get most out of the video is to see if you can do the problem in advance, okay? Just don't go right to the solution. So. Uh, if you don't want to see the solution, pause the video now because I'm going to get into factoring this and we're going to factor this uh, using this first technique. Okay, so here is our uh, trinomial. So we have 12x squared plus 5x minus 3. We're trying to factor it. So what does that mean? Well, when you factor something, let's take like the number 20. Okay, this is a number. So Factoring means we want to break up this number in terms of some multiples. So we can write 20 as a, a 2 times 10. Okay, 2 times 10 is 20. So 2 and 10 are what we call factors of 20. Okay, meaning that the product of 2 and 10 is in fact 20. So it's, it works the same in algebra. Uh, what we're trying to do is break this um, trinomial up into 2 uh, separate binomials, okay, like a trinomial, you'll have to break up into two binomials such that the products of these binomial is this trinomial. Now, what happens when you have, let's say, let's go back to numbers here for a second. Let's say I have like the number seven. Well, this number happens to be a prime number, so only one times seven uh, are the factors of seven. So there are times um, 
where your trinomial cannot uh, be factored. In other words, you, well, there will not be uh, two binomials that will that you can uh, break this into, right? So uh, sometimes your answer to these uh, questions will be prime, all right? Like in other words, hey, it can't be factored. So you just never know. That's why you have to approach each factoring situation. You got to really go through um, each variation of possibilities to get the answer. So the first method that we're going to look at here is what we call the guess and check method. So here is uh, just a quick overview of that. I got additional videos on this on my channel. Of course, I teach this thoroughly in my algebra class. Uh, so here we have 12x squared. So let's talk about this first uh, term. So we're writing this trinomial from highest to lowest power. So the first thing about this guess and uh, we call this the guess and check methods. There are some other names to it, but basically you'll recognize this method here is that we want to break up this 12x squared into uh, its factors, possible factors. So how can we break up a 12x squared? Well, now, when you're factoring a trinomial in general, you have to write uh, two sets of binomials. So here we have the variable x. So one of the x's has to go here, one of the x's have to go here. So I can kind of think, uh, let me do this here. Let me fix this guy up. 2x, and let me fix this up. Just caught that. Okay, so here, this 12x squared, I could put a 6x there and a 2x there. That'll give me a 12x uh, squared. Or I can have 12x times x, that'll give me a 12x. Or I can have 4x times a 3x, that'll give me a 12x. So what I'm saying here, your first position of each one of these binomials is going to be this first um, x squared term broken up in all kinds of different ways. So I can break this up in all the possible variations of 12x squared. And by the way, I could put this 2x here, the 6 here, I could put the x here, the 12 here, the 3x and the 4x. So you can mix and match this up. Uh, but the bottom line is that the first position in these binomials will be the factors of this first um, um, part of the trinomial, okay, our leading term to be technically correct. All right, so that's um, kind of like the first part of this kind of guess and check method. Now, the second half of it is we take this last number, 3, okay, and we put the factors of 3 in the um, second part of the binomials here. So in other words, these positions, okay? So these are all the possible factors of three. Now three is a pretty easy number, but if we were dealing with a number like say 20, we would have like one times 20 or factors, four times five, two times 10. So you have all these different variations in these positions right here, okay? Now, so where does that leave us? Like what are we trying to, what are we trying to do? Well, the first thing, uh, that I want to just show you is that when you're uh, doing this guess and check method, and you can get better at this, I'm just kind of writing it all out. What you're trying to determine, okay, is you want to get to this middle number right here, 5x, this middle term, so specifically this 5. So the way we look at getting there is we're taking, uh, well, I kind of call them the double smileys, but basically going to take these terms right here, 1 times 2x, for example, is 2x, and 6x times 3 is an 18x. And you're going to ask yourself, can I get to a 5x? Is there any combination of adding or subtracting to get to a 5x from an 18x and, and 2x? Like, no. If I add these together, I'll get a 20x. If I subtract, I can get like a 16x. There's no way I can get a 5x. So you kind of have to play with these uh, double, I call them double rainbow, double smiley, whatever you want to uh, uh, call it. But down here, you can see this bottom combination seems to show promise. Okay, let's uh, look at this. Remember, uh, I, I want to get to a 5x, right? So 5x, that's what I want to get to, a positive 5x. So here, remember my 12x squared, I broke up as 4x and 3x. That's one combination. And my 3, I could break up as 3 and 1. But if I look at this here, I'm like, okay, 3 times 3, that's 9x, a positive 9x. And then 4x times this 1, that's 4x. So let's let's get rid of the signs here because I actually have the answer in here. I have a 9x and 4x, and I want to get to a positive 5x. So how can I take a 9x and 4x and make it into a positive uh, 5x? Well, if I have a positive 9x and I subtract a 4x, I will get a positive 5x. So 
let's make this 9x positive by making that 3 positive, and then we'll make this 4x um, negative by making this negative, all right? So I have uh, 4x times negative 1, that's negative 4x, and then positive 3 times 3x is a positive 9x. So when you add these together, you do get a positive 5x, and the combination that, uh, once you have this combination right, then in fact, these are the factors. These are, this is the answer, okay? So this is called the guess and check method. I kind of quickly kind of reviewed it. There's, when I really teach this, like in my algebra course, I break it down even more thoroughly. But uh, I would say most of you are using this method. Now I'm kind of writing it all out and kind of going nice and uh, slow breaking things down. But this is a typical approach to factor these trinomials, okay? We kind of, I call these kind of case two trinomials. Again, there's a lot to know about factoring. We're just looking at these type of trinomials um, in this particular video, but hopefully this kind of makes uh, sense or whatever technique that you're using probably is going to look something similar to this. Now, uh, you know, a lot of students struggle with this technique because there's a lot of checking, they get, there's a lot of confusion going on. So there is another way we can approach factoring this. I actually like this uh, approach because it's a very direct approach. But I, and also I want to mention that I just made some um, videos on my channel. Uh, you can find them in my algebra playlist on factoring. I think I call it the best factoring hack. There's part one and part two. Um, I go over uh, trinomials much more in depth on this particular method I'm showing you here. It's something that you definitely want to know. So let's say you don't like that first guess and check method or it confuses you or, you know, uh, for whatever reason, you're like, you know what, is there another way? Uh, you're in luck. There is another way. So here is our same trinomial. So what we can do is take this number 12 and we can multiply it by this uh, last number. In this case, it's negative three. So that 12 times negative three is negative 36. Now I'm going to list all the factors of negative 36. Now, this seems like a lot of work and I'm showing you all the work, but believe me, you can get very good at this method. Uh, you don't have to do all this work. And if you watch those other videos I suggested, you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, so let's just talk about the factors of negative 36. So notice here I'm writing factors in pairs. Always do this, uh, always write these things in pairs when you use this technique, because you're gonna see here, negative 36 is negative one, let me write that a little bit better, negative one times 36, or, or a positive one times a negative 36 will get you to a negative 36. Likewise, negative two times 18 will get you to a negative 36, or positive two times negative 18. This is why you write these things in pair. Pair. So I like to start with the number one, two, three, just keep going up um, uh, from like your lowest factor to your increasingly highest factors this way. So we could just kind of just quickly look at this and kind of follow the pattern. And what are we doing here? Well, what we're doing is you're going to look at the sum of these factors. Okay. What do I mean by that? So negative one plus 36 is a positive 35. 1 plus a positive 1 plus a negative 36 is a negative 35. So you're like, okay, well, you know, big deal. Like, what's the, uh, you know, what am I looking for? Well, you're looking for 5. You're looking for that same number. We're looking for a positive 5. So let's identify the pair of factors such that you can get a positive 5. Okay, so how about right here? Okay, negative 4 uh, plus this positive 9 gets me to 5. So these are the factors here that we're going to be using um, to uh, factor this trinomial, okay? Now, again, if this is the first time you're seeing this technique, don't panic because I'm kind of throwing a lot at you. This is a good reminder how important it is to factor um, polynomials. So you're going to have to follow through and practice this procedure um, more, but I think you'll like this if you have uh, trouble with that guess and check method. So we're going to use these number, uh, numbers, negative 4 and 9x, uh, and we're going to do use those numbers in this manner, okay? So we're going to rewrite 5x, okay, that term, middle term in the trinomial. We're going to write that as negative uh, 4x plus 9x, okay? Because so, a negative 4x plus 9x is the same thing as a 5x, okay? So that's how you're going to use these numbers. But once you rewrite your 5x in terms of those these two numbers like so, what you're going to do is group factor. You're going to factor out the GCF in this first group and factor out the GCF 
and this second group. Now, the GCF is the greatest common factor, so let me just show you what I'm talking about. So I have 12x squared plus a negative 4x. What can I factor out here? Well, I can factor out a 4x, okay? Because 4x times 3x is 12x squared, okay? This is my greatest common factor. And then 4x times this negative 1 is a negative 4x, okay? So that's fact. Um, this is what I mean by factoring out the GCF. And then we're going to go ahead and factor out the GCF right here. So I can factor out a positive 3. Okay, now, of course, if you're not understanding, you need to review how to factor the GCF. And you're in luck because I have tons and tons of videos on this in my pre-algebra algebra playlist. And, of course, I teach this thoroughly in my algebra course. All right, so 3 times 3x gets me back to 9x. And then 3 times negative 1 gets you back to a um, negative 3. Okay, so you, hopefully you can see how these two, uh, these this group was factor, can be factored this way with the GCF and this group can be factored this way. Now notice that we have the same common factor amongst each of these, this 3x minus 1. Well, that is one of our binomials in our answer. And the remaining uh, information, the other binomial, right? Because remember, a trinomial always breaks up into two binomials, is the, this 4x and that plus 3. Okay, so we have 4x plus 3, and that is the answer. Okay, that is, if you notice here, 4x plus 3 times uh, 3x minus 1 is what we got over here. Okay, so these are two methods, all right, the guess and check method and this kind of procedural uh, approach. Um, I like to teach both, but you need to know both, okay, but you're really, I think sometimes students really have trouble with that guess and check method and they, they kind of want a procedure to follow. And if this is the first time you're seeing it, you might think, oh, that's a lot of work. It's really not that much work. Okay, this is a great... Uh, method because you don't you'll get better at this you can get better at both methods by the way but sometimes when you're doing the guess and check method for these uh, trinomials where there's a lot of different possible variations in them it can get a little confusing and you may not you know you might have to try a lot of different um, uh, variations it's easy to make a mistake and be like oh I can't find it so this is prime for example no, uh, that's why I like to have, make sure that students know both methods. So hopefully you found that appealing. And as I promised, I was going to give you some follow along guidance. So the first is what I already told you. Um, if you like uh, these methods, just go to my uh, channel, uh, go to my algebra playlist. I teach, um, I think, again, uh, well, I have a lot of videos on factoring. You should hopefully watch them all on uh, the GCF and factoring different type of trinomials. But I believe uh, the title uh, on that one is Best Factoring Hack, I believe. <laughs> it's a I make so many videos, it's crazy. But uh, I think it, it has a crazy amount of views already. You know, there's a lot of people I know, you know, I know what students typically, a lot of the videos I make is on areas where I know that students are already having uh, uh, challenges with because I've been teaching this for so long. There's a lot of things I can't do. One thing I do pretty well is teach math. Why? Because I've been doing it for decades. Okay, You just kind of get good at it, and I kind of know those sore spots that uh, trouble uh, students. So uh, that's the first um, suggestion is go back and check out my additional videos there. And then obviously my best help is going to be in uh, one of my courses, like my algebra course, really get into factoring. But either way, you just simply are not going to be able to pass algebra without, and I really, you know, that sounds like a big statement, and it, it's very true. You're not going to be able to get through algebra without knowing how to factor. So you're going to have to face these type of uh, trinomials and other type of factoring situations, but you can do it, and I am here to help. Okay, so if you like my teaching style, stay tuned, but I already have hundreds of videos on my channel, so... Hopefully you'll become a subscriber, and if this video helps you out, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. Okay, so with that being said, um, I definitely wish you all the best in all your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.